We want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, 1812 Barbecue, Blue Collar Cycle Shop, and Operation Decisive Victory. Without you, this episode would not be possible. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and say it with me, the pursuit of gravy. We are broadcasting from our SFP Autonomous Zone Studios right here in beautiful Concord, North Carolina. I'd be your host, Biggin, and how about you? Let me go ahead and introduce the rest of the team. We have uh, Manning the chat room and the video. It is our Magic Man, a.k.a. Rydog. <laughs> hey, everybody. How's it going there? Uh, manning the control deck. It is our producer, producer Brian. Hey, guys. And across the way is the pride of Anderson, South Carolina. But most of you probably know him best as the Silver Tongue one, 2020's Motorcycle Salesman of the Year, the inventor of the redneck egg roll. Give it up on old mic number one. It's Mojo! How about you, buddy? Hey guys, appreciate you tuning in for uh, a new episode here on the Southern Pride Philosophy. If you're catching us on the Facebook Live, appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate the uh, lively uh, comments and the uh, my side of the watch party that I was doing on Southern Pride Philosophy. It was very interesting to see those. Um, you can find us on our website at southernfriedphilosophy.com. You can also find us on our, our podcast. Where, where have you downloaded your podcast? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be on some Ching Chong, Japanese, Chinese, Pakistani. Can't say that. No, okay. Uh, wherever, wherever, wherever place you download your podcast, just go there, hit Southern Fry Philosophy, or you can search it as Ching Chong Chong Chong. And um, yeah. just hit there. Send your can't emails to Mojo at SFP Radio. That always works. <clears throat> and um, you can just hit there and the old search button, the old magnifying glass, Southern Fry Philosophy. Hit the uh, subscribe, give us a like, give us a rating, give us a review. Up or down, we don't care. Just give us a review, give us a rating. That's how we move up in the old podcast algorithms. You can also find us on the Twitters and Instagram at SFP Radio. I, I guess we're still posting there. Yeah, right. we're trying. All right. But on our website, you have the playable links there for work. I know a lot of you guys are going back to work. You're bored. You can go there. There's nothing to do. Producer Brian does a great job of doing our show notes on there. You can find out all the BS we're talking about. Any guests we may have, you can find their um, their links to their websites, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, that's just where you can find us. Also, you can go to our patreon.com forward slash SFP radio. Um, we really don't do much for ourselves, but we, we've actually donated a large proceeds of, of our, <laughs> anything we, yeah. Pretty much anything we've collected on Patreon, we uh, we have one of the Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin moments mm-hmm. with the pet moments where we just donate everything away. Right. So we basically just collect there it. There were tears. We, there were we give it away. There's music. For, for only 69 cents a day. You can support you a veteran. And uh, we've partnered up with uh, ODV, you know, Operation Decisive Vic. We actually want to have them on, I think, what, next week? Next week. A special yep. 630 Great episode. Great organization. And um, actually, I'm going to take a side note. Come on. Anyone who has uh, Amazon, um, Mm -hmm. you can actually go to Amazon.smile. Right. Um, You can choose any various organization. Um, I have now partnered up with Operation Decisive Victory on our business side of the um, Amazon purchases. Because, you know, you you buy, what what do you not buy from Amazon? I mean, anything. I think today I bought like an ashtray for my smokers. Okay. And, yeah, you know, percentage of that proceeds went to, um, you know, Operation Decisive Victory. I brought I mean, hemorrhoid cream, so there's that. You know what? I'm sure Tintu and Donna are probably appreciative that you have flare-ups every once in a while. You know, so. it helps. Every every bit helps. Yeah. And if my hemorrhoids brings them a few cents, I'm glad to do it. Subscribe and save. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe and save. Actually, you can. <laughs> it is a budget-friendly thing. So whatever you have to do to make that happen, just make it happen. 
Yeah. Uh, also, if you are listening to the podcast and you are unaware that we do Facebook Live and YouTube Live, we would really appreciate it if you watch those. You know, you could watch us, which is probably. I mean, you see, you get to see more fun things, so there's that. Um, but if you are watching on Facebook Live or YouTube Live, there's a podcast, so you could do that. But we do need everybody to go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, get notified uh, that there's new episodes. That help our helps our numbers go up. We need to get a hundred before we get the fun little SFP um, website link thing. So we would appreciate you just going out there. Uh, the more we've been advertising this, though, the numbers keep going down. So I don't know if that's that's probably not good, right? That would be a no. Got it. Um, so so there's that. So is my stock my stock portfolio. You are not thing, joking. So. Good lord, I lost like a hundred bucks today. I more it was than going that. up or something. Anyway, well, yeah. Uh, if you are staying at home and you you know you can't go to work because you got the Rona or you you know it's uh, not feasible to go to work and you want to start a podcast like we do, uh, contact producer Brian at headlines at SFP radio. Uh, he can get you up and running and, uh, tell you all the fun things that we've screwed up that, uh, you don't have to. So there's that, um, listeners, I think I'm officially going to dump, dump the RV across America map. Mm-hmm. Our folks from New Hampshire, Vermont, North Dakota, Wyoming, or Alaska evidently doesn't give a crap. So I'm going to stop worrying about it, but it would have been nice to have the whole country. But the, well, I think if we quit, if we quit thinking about it. It'll happen. We'll be, yeah. yeah. I mean, but look at our, I mean, our international listeners. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, we're yeah, all over I, the world. Yeah. But y'all in New Hampshire, yeah, got to yeah, jack it up for yeah, everybody. Got to quit, you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to quit just placing all your bets on those three, those few states. That's the last ones. I just want to make it all pretty and colored in. That's all I want to do. I'm not asking for a time. Well, say we got I challenge a, us. Just, you know, I challenge us just to take a road trip. There we go. We can do that. To, to you know, for for a few breweries or or distilleries up there, and we'll or listen syrup. to a podcast. Syrup yeah. distillery. Syrup. Is, it, is it syrup or syrup? It depends. it depends on the mood that I'm in. Sometimes it's syrup. Sometimes it's syrup. I think uh, touche. Brian says syrup. I don't have an answer for that. Did I say syrup? Yep. Maple Ryan, syrup. Go. Yeah. Uh, that's the way. Fry dog. Syrup. Syrup. All right. Sup. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> there's that. I'm going to ask you guys like I ask you every week. How you be doing? Fry dog, go. Good Lord, this has been a week. <laughs> Man, uh, thankful that I have a job. Thankful that I'm able to work from home with this job and, and, and haven't really suffered economically like so many other people have during this whole coronavirus thing. But man, uh, it's been a very stressful week. Um, yeah, it, looking forward to the weekend. I'm so no glad doubt. tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow is, no, tomorrow's not Friday. Today, yep. Tomorrow yep. is Friday. Yep. That's right. We record Good on Thursday night, evenings. night, y'all. Tomorrow's Friday. That's PGIF. when Mojo's supposed to come over, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, producer Brian? How you be doing? I'm great. I'm awesome. Are you really I'm though? I'm really great. You know, it's it's concert like festival season right now. Mm. It's like summertime. Everyone's having like sure. their or they would have been having, you know, the would have been. Uh, was it Coachella and the Woodstock or you know, whatever you call them, all these Burning yeah, Man. All these festivals. So um I'm having my own festival right now. <laughs> Tell I'm, us about I'm it. I'm calling it Carbapalooza. Okay. So I'm not going to music. I'm mm-hmm. just eating all of my carbs for the next like 26 days or something. It's a long. Within how long of a period? It's till middle of July. I don't know. Okay. All right. So in 26 days, something you're like just that. carbing. I, that was the arbitrary number. So you can drink. You can also drink your carbs too. Well, yeah. I, so I've been. I've bumped up to from Mick Ultra to PBR because you know it's like quadruples the carbs there. You know, mm. it's actually, it probably saves your budget too. Well, yeah, well, it's already in the fridge, so I didn't buy any stuff. <clears throat> so but I'm saying you you can get, actually get like a case of PBR for like twelve ninety nine yeah. versus twenty one ninety nine. Yeah. Well, so. I have a case and a half of milk ultra in the fridge already, so I'll, I'll be tipping into that still. <laughs> mm. I'd be more than happy to take it off your hands if you'd like. And the cheapest I've found is the beast. No. Oh, okay. Well, Milwaukee's it's not best. about, listen, Pabst got a blue <laughs> ribbon for that beer. It has to be a reason for it. You know, they won an award. Uh, so, I've, I've, 
I got, been doing keto for five months and I needed a break. I was getting a, I got blood work done this week and that's all great. So this is, it's been four days and here's mm-hmm. my list so far of what I've Oh, eaten. I'm so excited you ready for this. <laughs> Dude, I, all week I've been like, I need to know. <laughs> so I left the doctor. As I said, I went to Bojangles, Cajun filet biscuit, check. That might be the best With one the I've pimento ever eaten. cheese or without it? No, I went straight. I, you it, just went straight. It okay. was right. so. Listen, I've had a biscuit in five months or fried chicken. So those oh, two Lord. like together was pretty good. Did uh, your mind explode at that? Moment? It was sh- shockingly good to me. I mean, again, anything would have been good with that was deep mm-hmm. fried and breaded probably at that point. First thing sure. I ate. Uh, then I had a cinnamon biscuit. And if you haven't had the okay. Bojangles cinnamon biscuit. Uh, happen. Those are, oh yeah. Here's here's the thing though. I liked the stuff. the pecan whatever those things were, like the little pecan sticks. Uh, they don't have them no more. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If I ever had one of those. Those were good. Well, those cinnamon, have you had those? Yeah. But they they have a blueberry yeah, biscuit too. I have. Yeah. And they changed. Those used to be like a gob of blueberry in the middle, and they changed that to mm-hmm. some biscuit. I just my wife likes this. I skipped it. That's some bow rounds. That's the you know that was the first the thirty minutes. <clears throat> thirty minutes. Uh, I forget what lunch was that day, but I had some more. I've had Oreos, I've ice cream. Okay. I've already said I had real beer. I had tacos, like real tacos, not chaffles or egg white tortilla tacos, mm. nachos yep. because I had mm. taco meat. Uh, oatmeal was great. I haven't had you know, oatmeal in five months, and that's a s- simple but <laughs> satisfying. That's not something. That's not something I look forward. It's not, to, but it was there. Like no. you know what? I can eat this. I'm gonna eat it right now. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, <laughs> I, got you. Uh, I had a banana. And that is, you know, this is so much sugar. Like that was, a, it's like eating candy. I've been on keto for so long. I mi- I misplace I misplace all my carbs. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I mean, when you know, actually, I just had a. Uh, I've been I've been a hypochondriac because I was supposed to have a heart catheterization. So anyone listening, I had a heart transplant in 2016, small little operation, and um, so I was supposed to have a heart cath and. Uh, May just to kind of see the uh, projection levels and et cetera, et cetera. And I haven't had that due to the Rona because they don't want any of us coming in. Um, everything's, you know, that's considered a borderline elective operation. So anyway, mine's gotten postponed to 2021. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a hypochondriac by nature. And I also have a, uh, a Google, a Google W, you know, WebMD doctor. Don't degree. do it. Don't do <laughs> yeah. it. Everything's and, cancer. Um, oh yeah. That or, you know, I, I can give you a list of venereal diseases also. They go along well, with that. New. But, um, yeah. So, um, you know, I've had some symptoms and I, I keep panicking mm. and I, I went and got my blood test. And the only thing that came back bad was my bad cholesterol. Of course that, has been me eating basically a double bacon cheeseburger every day for the last two months. I, I mean, I could see that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the French fries you had before recording, that's, you know. <laughs> During the recording, yeah. I'm sure if we go to do a playback, you can see yeah. me eating French fries. Yeah. Wow. Um, there was one time where I went to the um, urgent care because I was, you know, just not feeling good, having some chest pains, whatever. I was convinced, like, it's over. I'm like, here we go. And then the doctor looked at me and said, you realize that's gas, right? Well, that explains it. Did he pull your finger well, after that? <laughs> should have. But you know what? But you know what? In your defense, <laughs> they told me the same thing. They told me to go home and just expel gas mm-hmm. out of my rear end. Right. Yeah, but I end up having a congestive heart failure. So, I mean, I, I can get that. Well, I went home, took some gas X and uh, X lights. You're all good. We're good now. Yeah. So there's that. I got you. I got you. Um, one thing about getting older, though, you know, you got to go through and you know, you know, take care of yourself. But the probably a couple of months ago, I was I was sleeping uh, on my left side, had my arm up, woke up, and my shoulder was killing me. Like it hurt. I was like, well. You know, no big deal. It'll pop back in place or do something. And it'll be fine. So that didn't work. It got progressively worse and worse over time until like earlier this week, I couldn't sleep. There was an issue where 
Like it was throbbing so much. <clears throat> and then uh, I was like, I'm going to call CJ. I'm going to, you know, get this taken care of. I may need Alan. I know you're watching the, sh- the show. I may need some physical therapy. You know, call your wife, see what, see what I could do, figure this out. Well, um, I was, <laughs> I w- took the dog out to go to the bathroom, was coming back into the house and I tripped over the stair that, you know, like the little stair that I have going into the house where I fell down and I landed on my left side of my shoulder. And in my head immediately, I'm like, well, done. Like I'm screwed. Like this is just going to be even worse. I got to go have surgery at this point. But I, I was waiting for the pain to just hit really hard, but then nothing happened. And then like I got up and still nothing happened. I think at some point my shoulder dislocated and then I popped it back in when I fell because it feels great now. Like I'm like, oh, I can sleep now. No pain. Everything is good. Maybe I just need to fall down more. I don't know. Have you guys ever had anything like that where you accidentally fixed yourself? I still have tailbone pain from where I've <laughs> slipped and fell on the stairs and oh, landed no. on my tailbone. Yeah, that still hurts. That was uh, three years ago, over three years ago. <laughs> Good I gotta figure, maybe if I fall down, it'll uh, make it go away. Yeah, maybe you fall down away. on the other side. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I just, like, it popped back in, and it felt great. So, anyway. So you, I like, guess nobody has dislocated your, sorry, I had a distraction pop up. You dislocated, yeah, no, I'm, like, your shoulder popped out, you said? I feel like, well, it, I didn't know that it popped out, and I guess maybe at night somehow it in popped out. In your sleep? Out. Yeah. I was sleeping on my side, and, and something happened. But when I, when I fell back abuse? in. No, okay. no, it's, that's mainly verbal. So okay. there's that. Oh, okay. Um, but I, when I fell down, it just, it didn't hurt and it felt a whole lot better. And I landed on that bad side. So who knows? It's like uh, Bruce Willis. There's what was the Die Hard 4. No, no, it wasn't Bruce Willis. It was a Mel Gibson. What's one of those uh, Lethal Weapon movies where he like he kept weapon. dislocating yeah. his shoulder to get out of <laughs> situations. Getting too old for this crap is what they say. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, let's go into some wacky news. We have got on the show tonight, we have got a special guest uh, from Warehouse Distillery. Uh, so they're going to be coming on the show fairly sh- sh- soon. So um, we're going to just go ahead and go into, um, actually, let's let's bypass the, the wacky news. We'll talk about that next week. Go into, uh, by the way, brought to you by 1812 Barbecue. If you need some fantastic barbecue, check out our friends at 1812 Barbecue. The 1812 Barbecue story started over 20 years ago when Eric and his dad started entering local barbecue competitions for fun. During that time, Eric, a United States Marine, has traveled all over the world picking up flavors and techniques that today is the unique flavor of the award-winning 1812 Barbecue. He has honed his craft to bring you fall-off-the-bone pulled pork, mouth-watering ribs, and finely crafted beef brisket. Eric has developed his own amazing dry rub, and delicious barbecue sauce. And let's not forget the sides. Coleslaw, smoked Gouda mac and cheese, cowboy baked beans, and to top it all off, banana pudding and pecan pie for dessert. Getting hungry yet? Good. Call or email Eric at 1812-BARBECUE, and he can make your next catered meal happen. Wedding and graduation parties, family reunions, and other events will be memorable with 1812-BARBECUE. Want to try your own hand at smoking meats? Pick up your own 1812 dry rub and start the journey for yourself. Shipping all over the world, connect with Eric on his Facebook page, Instagram at 1812barbecue, or call 704-604-5148 or email eric at eric.line at 1812barbecue.com and he'll be glad to help any way he can. Let's go into some some stuff that we have got to talk about. Um, Hot Topics brought to you by Operation Decisive Victory. Guys, I mentioned at the top of the show, the Southern Fried, uh, the SFP Radio Autonomous Zone. Guys, have you, you've heard about this City Hall Autonomous Zone in Seattle? Uh, Mojo, can you talk about that, bring some light to it? I know you're a little bit more versed into that than I am. Actually, I don't know if I am or not. Okay, well, we'll make it up as we go. I'll give you the condensed cliff note version from 11th grade, how I passed my senior year. Okay. English. Um, so obviously we know that Seattle, of course, all over the country in, in various 
cities. I mean, even my little small town of Salisbury had a little protest going uh, going on for George Floyd and um, police brutality and Black Lives Matter and whatever you know, whatever hot topic there was at the time. Um, Seattle has been a a hotbed in the last uh, two weeks, and I mean, Seattle is always a hotbed um, uh, for controversy. Uh, a city that's what eighty seven percent white is a, is a hotbed for for racial justice, which is kind of ironic. Anyway, so Seattle um, Antifa has taken over a whole district. Uh, I think it's a two, uh, approximately two block two. Two city blocks. Six, six to eight blocks at this point. Six to eight. They've expanded it. So um, they actually captured a police precinct. Police have actually abandoned this uh, mm-hmm. police precinct. And uh, Antifa has now set up a eight, six to eight block perimeter around this police precinct. And they're calling it, um, what is it called? City Hall Autonomous Zone, Capital a.k.a. Hill. Chaz. Chad. Chad. Capitol Chad. Hill Chaz. Autonomous Zone. Capitol yeah, Hill. Cop, Sorry, yeah, Capitol, Capitol Hill. Capitol. So they call us Chaz, and they basically set up barricades. The irony is they actually have armed guards at these barricades, mm-hmm. not letting anyone in. Yep. So they, they're protesting people that enforce law with guns. But now they have their own guns vetting people in and out of this autonomous zone. So, But that, that's basically what I've got right now. I mean, it's... Information is still coming through as far as what's actually happening, but basically, it's a, uh, um, it's just a uh, the wild, wild west of Seattle right now, from what I've gathered. Yeah, it's um, the 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 governor of Washington for the longest uh, didn't even know about it. I looked, I w- tried to watch the news today, and I, the only station that I saw that was talking about it was Fox News. Um, but evidently, the Trump tweeted a Wednesday of domestic terrorists uh, for those that um, are taking over. A radical left governor, uh, Jay, Jay Inslee, and the mayor of Seattle are going to be taunted and uh, played at a level that our great country has never seen before. Trump tweeted, take back your city now, and if you don't, I will. And then immediately the mayor, uh, Jenny Durkin, took um, a swipe at him, says, make us all safe, go back to your bunker, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Um, So now it's a Twitter war between the uh, mayor and Trump, while um, protesters are going in, they seized a six- block a six city block in downtown they uh destroyed the police precinct the city hall instead of saying the uh seattle police department it says the seattle uh people um department and at this point they are uh, arguing or their their demands are they want free food free water free shelter you could do whatever you want within our peaceful uh Area. By the way, they're charging people to come into the city, into their little autonomous zone. The uh, the folks that have business, businesses within that have to now pay them a, a fee to keep them safe. Uh, boy, that sounds like the mob, doesn't it? Uh, and they are allowing them just to do whatever they want in this autonomous zone. There's no rules. It's like an Applebee's. No rules, just right. That's out back. Um, so, how in the world has this happened? Like, how does this even take place where a group, it started off at 300 people, has taken over a city hall? I don't, well, I don't get um, it. Well, Seattle, there's, town, there's, there's cities, Seattle, Portland, that on the you know, northwest corridor who have done nothing but um, placate to protesters. They've cowed out. I'm, uh, Portland is another one. Uh, just these these towns placate to their population. These populations are not a minority population. These these like for example, Seattle is you know majority white. Portland majority white. 
Um, some of these other cities, like I said, majority white, but they are people that scream the loudest. Um, they Portland Portland has a mayor who is so inept that they probably should just dissolve the the position and let um, a hamster run the the government there. Because in the wheel is think, the hamster standing. Yeah, hamster I think the hamster in the wheel. wheel probably could do just a random <laughs> you know lottery th- shot with the the hamster. Wheel could actually probably make better decisions than the the mayor of. Uh, of you know, Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. and certain cities. Um, they have literally let these uh, loose organized groups of Antifa uh, run amok in the city. Um, once again, uh, my libertarian views, I, I think less government, less government, less corruption, but um, you you have, go back to this, this Chaz area. This, you know, Capitol Hill time zone. And you have people that have paid money for property to be there. And now they're having to pay some type of gang hold up fee to enter this zone. I mean, what, what's the ultimate goal of this, you know, these thugs? I know this is probably a racist, racist term in 2020 in June, but what, what is the ultimate goal of these thugs to, to gain, you know, They they think they have the moral high ground when they're trying to push out a state run state run um, for higher police, and all of a sudden now they're doing the exact same thing. They're 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 setting up borders. Remember that these these are the same people that protest um, borders in in yeah the southern border, northern border, as far as having you know borders, and then all of a sudden now they're placing a borders in this eight block zone. I mean. The, the yeah, hypocrisy no hypocrisy knows no depths. Yeah, with, with people, yeah, like there's this. no accountability there with whoever's running the the yeah, well, whoever it's, it's the, 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 the warlord West there, right? today is whoever that's going to be. Right. You know, whoever the, the biggest stick in the prison yard. Um, I should call it a purge zone because someone's gonna get killed, and then what are they gonna do then? You know, absolutely. <laughs> Even in these protests, yes. though, you'll sit. You remember. The story of the the guy trying to pull down the Confederate uh, statue, and they were killed because they didn't follow law and order, and it probably would have been coming down anyway. But the guy was standing underneath the statue and is in critical condition now, and probably won't make it because some some yuckums decided they want to pull it down. Um, but also, you can't, you can't defend that person standing underneath the statue. They were there from their own mm-hmm. personal decision, absolutely, I mean, and. Unfortunately, you know, Darwin's law, I mean, stupid choices, stupid prizes, you know, and that's what a lot of these guys are reaping. Now. And I think, uh, it, it, you know, I, I, you know, we're doing this Twitter war right now. I think you'll see, go back to Governor Inslee. Governor Inslee of Washington is a coup. This is the same guy that allows um, composting of human bodies as a form of, disposing of our dead bodies you know you, 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 traditionally we had cremation and funerals now we have an option in washington state to for compost so you know now i can put my body in a coat compost bin and grow the the family's tomato bit you know heirloom tomatoes i guess literally um, yeah this guy's this guy's a coot oh my gosh and, um if washington doesn't get their stuff right i think you'll see a federal a federal mandate to to fix this And we've talked about your libertarian thoughts multiple times on the show. With stuff like this, does it make you kind of rethink that we can actually self-govern ourselves at this point? Like, it was a different time then than it is now. I think think the principle of self-governance is based on respect. But we don't have respect anymore. No, but we don't. The, 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 The... the the rule of self governance is based off of doing to others as I want done unto me, or I will not do unto uh, to others as I, I'm being done upon. I mean, we're it's basically the golden the gold and silver rule is is the law of self governance. 
But the problem is you, you factor in humanity where none of us have that. A lot of us don't have that respect for the individual where, you know, we, we, we see what others have and we don't have, and we have to feel like we have to call that card and collect on. We just, we don't have that. I'm I'm not saying we have to have a, you know, the far right of the spectrum as far as like total police state, you know, where we have people monitoring our every move, but also does it, you know, I don't think we're responsible enough as a human race to allow free reign of, with no accountability. I mean, <clears throat> I was talking to my neighbor on the street. And I'm, in, I'm in a very challenged neighborhood where my business is. I'm like, we really need to organize a street cleanup here in the street because it makes our businesses look bad. And, you know, because people have no accountability, no self-worth in the neighborhood to actually not throw a soda can on the ground and et cetera, et cetera. We just, but as a human race, we, we collectively fail at that until it's, in, until we retrain a society or until we retrain it, retrain a generation. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think we can go without. I think was, we're at multiple generations now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. I don't think that the idea of helping your fellow man is, is even alive. Well, I'm not going to say it's not alive anymore. No, it is. But, but the idea of, those folks in in the U.S. of we're a unity and we're all in this together and we're all together to make this thing better. I don't think that that's there anymore. It's I'm going to get what I want, when I want, and how I want. And those ideas of like you were saying, I'll just take from you just because I want it. I I don't know if we have enough. And and we say on the show, common sense is a superpower, but I don't know if we have enough common sense for people to actually make a a justifiable line to say this is this is how I'm going to make the world a better place I'm just going to focus on my family and do what we want within reason uh instead of just I'm going to take 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 well i think i've i've been diving into this little book it's a $12 book off amazon it's called jesus jesus with dirty feet mm. um it kind of deconstructs the whole mantra of organized for, and I enjoy I enjoy books like this because since we've had kind of a time off from organized church, it's kind of interesting to, interesting to dive into books like this. And it's like I said, it's a simple book. It's probably 150 pages, but honestly, it could be condensed to probably 25. Are there it, pictures? It's kind of spr- the words are kind of pictures. Okay. So they're coloring pages in the simple, back. <laughs> like coloring pages. Yeah. They're stickers. It, it, you probably, there's probably enough room in the pages <laughs> to do it. But, you know, uh, there's simple simple thoughts. In this, you know, with if you look through the book of Romans, like Romans 3.23, it talks about how all have sinned. And when Christ came, I, I'm pretty sure he pretty much broke the racial line of who we are absolutely and you know christ didn't say everyone but the you know he said all Mm -hmm. he he used he used clear truths so if all have sinned come short of the glory and we all must repent that that pretty much includes all of us i mean that includes all this isn't pretty much it includes all if we if we were to, and I'm not trying to get all preach on. churchy and stuff like that, but I, I think if we were to, even if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, but if we took the simple mantra of all, we're all failures. Mm. We're all we're all pieces of garbage just trying to wake up and make men do better. If we all took that simple philosophy, we we would take our fellow man and we would try to do better as our individual. We would help that person out that's stalled on the side of the road, that person who's short three cents to to buy something that we may disagree with in front of us. I mean, we we just if we if we all just try, right? And we don't. A lot of us don't. A lot of us look the other way. A lot of us just don't have time to pull over the, for that person because of inconvenience. We we could do a lot for society if we just all did that. 
So if, if everybody is, you know, trying to be equal, you want equal rights for women, African Americans, uh, LGBTQ, um, anyone, Hispanics, whatever. I'll remind you, as <clears throat> Mojo was saying, the great equalizer is the cross. And I said this last week, and I'll say it again this week. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. <clears throat> Nobody's any better. Nobody's any worse. We're equal. That is the equalizer. And for those folks that that want, um, th- that want equality and they want fairness, that's not going to happen this side of the cross. I need, I need everybody to understand. <clears throat> it's not going to happen. Um, there's been racism from day one. That will always be here because that's part of the world. Um, does that mean that we need to stop fighting? We shouldn't fight for justice? Absolutely not. We should fight for that. We should try to make it as best as we can. We should try to, as we say at church, try to bring the kingdom to to earth. We should be doing that. Um, but understand, we live in a fallen creation, and the only way that we're going to be equal <clears throat> is through Jesus. That's the only thing that brings us together. And the death and resurrection of Christ is the only thing that justifies us to be to be father to be sons and daughters of of God. Um, so, but the problem is the problem is now is that we've had organizations, you know, these NGOs, non governmental organizations with churches that have hijacked the conversation. Absolutely. Where um, we're no longer worried about equality. We're worried about control of the narrative. Mm. Like, um, honestly, you know, that, that the hashtag has been, you know, for the last two and a half weeks, all, you know, again, the, the forefront has been Black Lives Matter. But do we honestly really truly believe that have have we really focused on that because in my little small town where my shop is there was there was a black gentleman killed the other day there's no right right race rights over that he was shot 26 times out of 200 200 shots fired not one person protested his death not one person calls the ire you saw maybe a few social media posts about you know rest in peace RIP, things like that. Mm. Um, we had four cops killed during the melee across the country of these protests, the ones that turned violent. We haven't seen one, one tear shed. We haven't seen one person raise up. Um, I actually had a friend of mine post that, well, they signed up for the duty to be, you know, they, they knew the risk wearing the badge. Mm. That's, that's unacceptable. Yeah, because if we're we're if we're following this mantra of this ha- this popular hashtag, then wouldn't all Black Lives Matter, not just Black Lives Matter? I mean, it it it, it just make makes no sense to me. Of course, as a white guy, I have no say in the conversation because um, my pigment dictates my validity, in, in in my opinion. But it's still frustrating. So. It's been a very frustrating two and a half weeks yeah. and for all of us, I think, for for all of America, not just me. I'm saying you know, for all of us. Um, just there's a lot. It's a lot of things that just don't add up in the conversation part. Yeah, no, and, and I agree. Uh, Ryan, did you want to say anything? No, it kind of goes back to what I said last week. If the simple thing is is that people abided by the golden rule, and you know, just cared and had respect for one another all of these social justice movements would be moot. Hmm. And, you know, the problem is, is we've gotten away from that in our society. We, you know, people aren't taught respect. They're not taught personal responsibility, taking responsibility for their actions. They're taught that, Hey, we're all victims. Um, and you know, like, a, you know, we were saying earlier, there's a generation that's been taught this. And I think there's actually multiple generations now that have been taught that. And the, the further along we go, the worse it seems to be getting. Maybe I'm just being an old guy talking and, you know, kids get off my lawn type <laughs> stuff, but still, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, and, but I do see a lot of hypocrisy 
in, yeah. in what's being said out there. Um, and I do see that there's a, you know, certain narratives that are being, um, held up higher than everything. We're not, we're not given being given the whole truth. We're being given what, uh, certain segments of the population and, and political parties and stuff want us to have, yeah. uh, to maintain control. And it's, it's scary. Right. And, and let me be clear. Like I, there is systemic racism that, that, that needs to be addressed in our culture oh, yeah. and, and in the U.S. There's hands down. Yeah. We need uh, we need to to look at that and and change the change the, the whole process on that. Uh, so that's a conversation I think needs to be had. What would make me upset and makes me upset is that is a conversation that I think is valid that we do have racism in our country and that needs to be addressed and it needs to be. Um, discussed and we need to talk about it but you have those other narratives that are happening in seattle that are hijacking a legitimate uh campaign and legitimate uh discussions and those are quieting those because now we have to talk about seattle and defunding the well, police. I would, to be the dissenting voice on the podcast is which is normal yeah um it's, it's but we can we call it podcast podcast thursday we can still love you um you know, this, the systematic racism that we claim is is prevalent. That would mean nationwide, absolutely, all fifty states, every county, every city. That it would be a standard that's held by every court, mm. by every by every courthouse, by every judge, by every law enforcement agency. That's a lot across the board. Now, I I do know because I, I follow several civil rights um, attorneys on the social medias. Uh, one of them I'd love to have on here soon. Uh, one of them, is, her name is Catherine Bernard. She's a friend of uh, Derek Grayson. Okay. Who we had on the mm-hmm. minister of truth. Um, I would love to have her, her uh, attorney agency on. And, you know, for example, you do have cases where, uh, I think that posted one today. You had a 19 year old white kid, second offense, mm-hmm. armed robbery. He got two months, and then you had a black guy who, 19 year or 21 years old, second offense, got 26 years in prison. Mm-hmm. Prison. Is that just judge prejudice, or is that systematic racism? It could you know, be both. System. Well, but no systematic racism would imply that the whole system pl- applies a mandate to people of color. But it, it, it systematic racism would would imply that people from foreign countries that may be, for example, from Nigeria, uh, uh, Liberia, Ethiopia, Kenya, would not be able to have the same, but be afforded the same opportunities as natural Americans. That's that's not the case because statistics show that. Any of these people from East and West Africa can come here and, and within four and a half years earn the average income of an American. Yeah. So yeah, um, systematic racism implies that the whole system is in it to make sure they're held back. And I don't necessarily agree with that term systematic racism, systematic racism because um, if that's the case, then you wouldn't have affirmative action. You wouldn't have um, minority uh, preferential hiring, um, preferential um, college intake, you wouldn't have. Um, I mean, I've seen very big companies post on their social medias, Instagram and Twitter, where they're now favoring minority scholarship programs, minority um, fulfillment in their employment ranks. They're not worried about qualifications anymore. They're now worried about people that may fit a certain political agenda. So it's no longer quality. It's it, and I'm all about what who the person is best to suit the job. Who are the person that has the best grades? I'm all about that. But now we have a we have a certain agenda. Yeah, but if that. you look at the statistics of of people that have the same qualifications that have a a, a white sounding name versus an African American sounding name. The, the callback numbers for those two that have the same qualifications are massively different. 
Um, I would, lo- I would, lo- I would love to see, st- I would love to see the t- statistic for that in 2020 mm-hmm. for a corporation such as Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Mercedes. Th- these companies are now so sensitive to making sure they do not make a mistake. I mean, we're we're seeing companies now that are ordering automatic termination on spot for people that may make a off color comment right. regarding sexual orientation, color, creed. Um, but that's 2020 though. Like this has been happening since the day one of America. <laughs> but we're, we're, but we can only, we can only refer to 2020. We're not, we're not, I mean, for example, if you wanted to, we could talk about this, this Chaz, you know, this Capitol Hill autonomous zone. These people have these people have traditionally rallied against in in this part of Seattle, Columbus Day, racist, blah 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 blah. And they have you you take anything that may be controversial. These people have rallied against it. Yeah. These people have fought for it. These people have complained about it. These people have protested, shut businesses down, shut traffic. They are the epitome of what they're against. They're now colonizers of land. They have forcibly forcibly take taken land that's not theirs to the <laughs> quote unquote indigenous inhabitants of the area. The people that have paid for that land. They're, they I mean, have you now can say committed. the same thing about Columbus, you know, like that's what I'm saying. They're, they are now the modern day <laughs> Christopher Columbus of the eight square blocks of Seattle. Does anybody have any uh, blankets laden with smallpox? Um, Mojo, this is a, dis- a discussion that I want to continue. I desperately want to keep having this. We may um, go to this uh, after, but we have our guests coming on the on the line. So, Producer Brian, will you uh, go ahead and lay that disclaimer down so that we know um, the views and opinions of Southern Fried Philosophy may not be those of our guests, sponsors, or friends of the show. The views they and opinions just of Southern it. Fried Philosophy <laughs> are not necessarily those of our guests, sponsors, or friends of the show, but they should be. All right, there we go. Jeez. All right, so we're going to bring in our special guests, Bailey and Andy Setzer from Warehouse Distillery. How are you, ladies? Hi, we're good. We're good. Awesome. Fantastic. And so just to introduce uh, you guys, uh, which one's Bailey and which one's Andy? I'm Bailey and I'm Andy. I'll be honest with you. I can't tell any difference. <laughs> yeah, we hear that a lot. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was like, you know, you sound just like me. <laughs> it could be, you could be the same person and we'll never know. <laughs> Even our mother gets us confused sometimes on the phone, so... Well, at least it's two people. My, I remember my dad would yell at me, but call me the dog's name. And I'm like, how do you even do that? Like, that's not, that's not even fair. Our parents do that to us too. <laughs> uh, Andy, I understand that you may have to leave a little early because you've got some stuff you're working on. Is that right? Yeah, that is. That's right. We're in the midst of planning a wedding, um, part two. Um, we, we were originally going to get married in April, but we are changed our date to June 26th. So it's coming up, and we've been kind of swamped with planning last minute. Um, so it's been a bit, bit chaotic around for me, um, even our family. But <laughs> just trying to get it all worked sure. out. Sure. Well, I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to to come on the podcast. And uh, if again, if you don't know, they are from the Warehouse Distillery, and that's in Newton, North Carolina. Yeah, we're right outside of Hickory, is what we say all the time. Okay, because everybody knows where Hickory's at. Because yeah, makes but sense. nobody knows where Newton is. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about Warehouse Distillery, uh, a family-owned distillery. Is that right? Yeah, we are family owned and operated. It's Andy and I and both of our parents. We're equal partners, all four of us. Um, it's our, it was actually Andy's idea, so I'll kind of let her take over on that part. Sure. Um, after gradu- graduating college with an entrepreneurship degree, I um, worked. I was uh, 
I really didn't know what I was wanting to do with with my life, honestly. Um, if I could have just been none of us here do either, so that's <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, I'd honestly, just stay at home if I could, but clearly that that doesn't work. So our parents had an empty side of their warehouse building that they owned um, that they needed to put a tenant in, and we had a family friend that was really interested in um, distilling and was talking to us about it, and it kind of just all fell into a place like that I mean it really wasn't like we I mean it was kind of random but not really totally random if that makes any sense yeah we all like to drink together too so one thing kind of led to another in that aspect (laughs) wow um but but you guys have have done it like if you look at your your uh website warehousedistillery.com like that's a that's a legit still you guys got going on. Yeah, we actually have two. Um, so our big one is our three hundred gallon hybrid top column still. That's the still that we make all of our whiskeys and as well as our neutral grain spirits on, as well as currently our hand sanitizer ethanol. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then we also have a small fifty gallon still um, that we are planning to use for gin in the future. We were about to start on gin, oh. and then coronavirus hit, and so we switched everything over to hand sanitizer. So gin's on the back burner for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did that happen? I mean, from a business, I mean, you guys are cranking out whiskey, bourbon, uh, and there's there's a maple bourbon as well. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this thing hit, and then all then you decide, hold up, now it's time to make hand sanitizer. <laughs> It was definitely kind of like a total 180, it felt like, at first. And then we realized, oh, wait, this isn't really all that different from our regular, you know, job. Now we don't even have to distill for flavor. We can just distill it as fast as we can get it out and mix it with glycerol and hydrogen peroxide and then bottle it and sell it and give it away to yeah, the responders. <laughs> yeah, what's the mash bill for hand sanitizer? We use 100% corn just because, honestly, it's our cheapest grain. So it was our way yeah. to keep cost low for the general public. Um, and also kind of streamline our production. We didn't have to measure out any particular grain. Um, we just kind of did a 1,500-pound corn mash in our 600-gallon mash ton and just kind of went from there. <laughs> wow. Can I die from taking a shot of hand sanitizer <laughs> from the Mexican <laughs> restaurant? I'm asking um, for a friend. <laughs> Well, you might want to tell your friend that it probably wouldn't be in his best interest to take a shot of hand sanitizer, considering the concentrations of hydrogen peroxide and glycerol. <laughs> might not be best for health. I guess it just depends on Need how some strong lime or something in there, right? <laughs> So, so should this friend end this podcast and probably go to the hospital? Yeah, or definitely probably, go to probably, the hospital. Uh, that, There's a drug but, fact label on the hand sanitizer okay. that says "Do not consume." <laughs> It, it's not like you don't is have that, is that for the su- house, friend. Is that for suggestion only <laughs> as far as the consume? Um, or is that- I think it might be for suggestion as well as like legal protection. There's so if that. you drink okay. it, okay. you can't sue us because we told you not to, you know? Sure. <laughs> so how did it start? Text, texting friend right now. <laughs> Taking notes. Why am I getting a text from Mojo? I don't understand. <laughs> um <laughs> So how did, how did it, like, you just decided one day, okay, here we go. We're going to start making some liquor. But at some point, it, the the thought became, well, we're not just going to do liquor. We're going to do bourbon, right? Because that's completely different. That's that's several years down the road to make bourbon versus just making moonshine. I think that's kind of why we wanted to go with whiskey first, because we knew that that was going to be kind of something that was going to be a long-term investment. It took us, what, maybe three years almost to get Mm -hmm. all of our licenses and everything set up and done in the building. So we knew that we were going to have a waiting period anyways. Um, And for us, bourbon is kind of like, it's kind of the IPAs of spirits right now. It's kind of like huge and everybody loves it. Um, So it kind of made sense to go go where the money is, go where people are experimenting. People are finding more craft bourbons than they were other spirits at the time. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Bailey, on, on the again on the website warehousedistillery.com, uh, you list that you're the you do the chemistry stuff. So, how did do do you have like a, a 
mixologist degree? Like, how does that, <laughs> how do you do the heads, tails, and cuts and everything else? Um, most of it, honestly, is just senses. I'm not any kind of expert. It's like, you get, you get to the point where you, you go through the motions enough, and Andy can vouch for this, that you can smell the difference as soon as it switches to heart. Mm-hmm. You, it goes from smelling like nail polish remover to smelling like sweet liquor. <laughs> um, so it's pretty much senses and taste and smell and kind of just knowing what flavors you're looking for. Um, Dad, Dad and I do a lot of the distilling, and Andy's been doing a lot of it here recently as well. Um, but we, Dad and I both had independent spirit brewing backgrounds, so a little bit of our okay. base chemistry knowledge came from that. Um, and then we just kind of flipped it to distillation, which is actually a little bit more reliable of a process than beer brewing. So kind of works sure. out in favor. Yeah. Yeah, but no So if one like, takes a shot out. of hand sanitizer, <laughs> so if one takes a shot of hand san- <laughs> sanitizer with a michelada, is that safer? No. Or, oh. I mean, oh. I would, I would my friend just keeps texting me right now. To be honest. Straight up. Well, that is this is my friend. It, it did have the shrimp and, and celery and garden <laughs> all over it. So I, that's what my friend says. Have you been, how, much, how much of the samples have you been drinking at this point, Mojo? I hope as much as me. Tonight or over the course of the past Just week? Just tonight. <laughs> well, the maple bourbon I thought was going to be good for pancakes, <laughs> but... So what, I forgot the pancakes. What's funny about that is our family meal is chicken and waffles. And no joke, oh, we are poured it over chicken and waffles. Natty girl. I put it in my coffee. Well, they know how to party tonight. So, <laughs> so I, I guess maybe talk me through how you have this conversation with mom and dad. Say, mom and dad, we think we we're going to make uh, bourbon. Uh, we're going to use this, uh, this spot out in your warehouse. Uh, Andy sets up the business plan and makes it happen. Like how support, obviously they were supportive. Um, how did that, that conversation and how did that process go down? Um, I, this is Bailey and I wasn't even, I kept refusing to come home and be a part of it. So I'll let Andy talk about that. <laughs> sure. Um, so it, they're, they're, I mean, yeah, our parents are a hundred percent supportive of us um, in all aspects of our lives, but they've always been the ones to like back behind, like stay back behind us and, um, you know, kind of let us do our own thing, but also guide us in the right directions. And they're, um, entrepreneurs in their own right. So they, they knew the business part of like starting all of that. Um, so they gave us, gave me a lot of mindset on that kind of thing. But, um, of course we wouldn't be anywhere close to where we're at right now if we didn't have them. Um, and yeah. they financially supported us also. So that helped a lot too. So yeah, for real. They let us put um rent on the back burner for a while. Because so. <laughs> uh, that, that equipment ain't cheap. Uh, no. I don't I don't know a whole lot about it, but I know that that ain't cheap. Yeah, and well, no. honestly, without them as partners, being young women in our 20s, we would have had a really, really hard time getting a business loan. I mean, the only credit she yeah, and I and really have is our student loans. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I kind of want to talk about. So as young women, one, getting into the bourbon industry, which is, for the most part, a male-dominated field, Mm -hmm. what are the challenges that you had besides, you know, I mean, just what are all the challenges that you had with that? I think, for me, I don't don't know if, Andy, you feel this way, but it's kind of being questioned a lot that we know what we're doing. Like, you go to festivals, and you're talking Mm -hmm. to people, and then they look at you, and they say, well, who owns it? And we say, well, we do. And they kind of laugh at you, and they go, no, really? And you're like, oh, okay. Oh, wow. they, say, <laughs> they say bourbon's made in Kentucky and only in Kentucky. And then we're like, no, it's yeah, not. And they argue it anywhere. And they, they'll sit there and argue with us. And, and we'll, like, basically say laughing. the CFR. Yeah. It's, they'll argue for days. Yeah, I had a, a, a friend from Kentucky that was uh, here this past weekend, and he argued that it was only – from Kentucky is bourbon. I was like, that's not true. It could just has to be in the U S mm-hmm. yeah. The federal government so. doesn't let us just slap bourbon on a label willy nilly, you know? <laughs> sure. Talk about the regulations. What makes bourbon bourbon? So it has to be made with at least 50% corn. 
It has to come off the steel at no more than 160 proof, go into a new charred American white oak barrel at no more than 125 proof, and be bottled at no less than 80 proof. And of course, Sounds made like in you the know US. what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah made in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't add any flavorings or anything else to it as well. Um, not to call it, not if you want to call it bourbon. And you can't stick your barrels. Mm. You can't age it in any other device other than a new charred American white oak barrel. Yep. Uh, is there any regulation on the size of the barrel? Not currently, but there has been a push from the larger distilleries. Um, I think probably to diminish craft bourbon um, mm -hmm. that won't allow any small barrel aging. Um, so no, so it would have to be 53 gallon barrels. Lucky for us, that's all we use. <laughs> um, but I do think that that would diminish the ability for craft makers to make their bourbon on smaller scales. Because for us, even 30 gallon barrels would be great because that's about what we get off of each run. Um, so we have to have multiple mm. runs to fill up a 53 gallon barrel at barrel strength. Wow. So, um, so you you only are using the 53 gallon. How long are you aging? that bourbon um our bourbon is two years old so years. it's technically it's considered a straight bourbon so straight is really with any yep. whiskey um straight just a fancy way of saying it's at least two years old <laughs> okay and what, then once it's uh, beyond four years it doesn't have to be labeled as a year how old it is if that makes any sense so mm -hmm. if it's older than four years old, you don't have to say it's 10 years old, but I mean, it makes it sound better. From a marketing you perspective, you will. Though. <laughs> Absolutely. What's, uh, besides your alls, uh, Andy, what's the best bourbon that you've had? Well, hmm. <laughs> I I really don't know. I try I try not to be particular to a particular and have like a favorite. Um, I try to expand my horizons and I don't want to say that I've had the best bourbon because I haven't had all the bourbon. Um, sure. I really prefer like a rye whiskey over a bourbon. Um, but I'm trying to think of like, <laughs> I mean, any I mean, North Carolina bourbon a lot of is great. <laughs> Yes, I say a large brand. It's it's just us talking. You're not going to offend anybody. It it doesn't matter. Um. Or we'll just say one another bourbon that you like. And I can't say ours. <laughs> just kidding. Um. Well, you, obviously you like yours. Yours is, is the best, right? Yeah. Uh. For us. <laughs> I mean, I like. Oh, a, well, you'll drink Basil Hayden's every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, I like theirs, but I like their rye whiskey better. So. <laughs> the basil yeah. rye. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ba you you seem like a little hesitant to answer. Do you, we don't have to. We don't have to ask if that's a problem. No, she's just indecisive. <laughs> Honestly, I like them all yeah, myself. Very. So, yeah, <laughs> as long as it doesn't taste bad, she'll drink it. <laughs> as long as it's not hand sanitizer, she'll drink it. Yeah, exactly. Well, hold on, don't don't be so judgmental on the hand sanitizer. <laughs> I honestly, the well, other day, I had better, some hand sanitizer. Better liquor than hand sanitizer. Yeah, I I had some, and it was like a freebie mm. from someplace, and. I, you know, put it in my hand and it just reeked of nasty alcohol. Like it was, it just wasn't, it wasn't good. And I was like, oh, it was just straight alcohol and it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. Yeah, it smells like pretty much just ethanol. Right. Yeah, it was, it was not good. Evidently, you've never had to lower your standards <laughs> like I have. So I'm just going to throw that I out there. I drank things in so, college. My standards were pretty low. Uh, well, I had to make I had to make I had to make prison liquor in college, so that's uh, that's my standard. So yeah, I made some hooch, raisin sugar and water. Oh uh, Lord, bread. that goes that goes a long way. Yeah. I'd rather drink. Hand that was in seminary too, it. and that was, uh, that's the reason why you see uh, my friend is still surviving from hand sanitizer. So 
<laughs> Got to clean out that. <laughs> so, uh, our our uh, our men's our loose men's church group uh, had to cancel our bourbon trail this year. So I take it you're I, Lutheran. I think we need to have an insight. No, 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 we're Baptist. no. Reformed we're, Baptist. We're, we're not. Don't say Reformed, Reformed Baptist. Baptist. I think we're non. I think we're recovering non denominational. Yeah. I think that's probably that's better. That's it. We're non denominational. That's right. Yeah. We, we go to meetings. We don't go to church. We actually go to support group meetings. But um, I, I think we need to do, since we had to cancel our bourbon trial, I think we need to do a bourbon tour of this distillery. If yeah. We can get it inside. Yeah, we'd love to have you guys. Um, yeah. We're also building a cocktail bar that will hopefully be done mm-hmm. by the end of the summer, early fall. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're going to have viewing windows into the distillery as well from the cocktail bar. And it's going to be called the nice. Lowe's Lock at Warehouse Distillery. Very cool. Oh. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, I will say, here's my question to Andy. Is there going to be an open bar at the wedding? Uh, <laughs> Yes, there will be. <laughs> um, there wasn't an option with our dad, um, but we're trying. We really would love to keep like it local, and that was like hopefully we can get North Carolina um, products. Just just have North Carolina products. That's one of our biggest goals for the cocktail bar and the distillery um, to do just North Carolina products like beer, wine, and liquor um, to showcase those. Um, more so than like the bigger brands that get showcased throughout, you know, all restaurants. So hopefully well, we can stick sure. to that for, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully we can stick to that for our wedding. But um, my fiance loves uh, loves him some um, New Belgium, so that might we might have to skip on that for the beer. But <laughs> gotcha. definitely with the hey, well, there's a New Belgium in Asheville, so technically oh, yeah, you could sure. Yeah, we could work it. So, so you're not having your your uh, reception in uh, Wilkes County or Surrey County, right? Correct. Yeah, it is in Avery County. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also assuming Those are dry we're not counties getting... for everybody who doesn't know. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, our our parents would have been like, all... um, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I didn't know. Dry counties actually still exist. I did not know that either. Well, I know those counties; they were dry 15 years ago. I think yeah. I think there's a few more like out uh, down east that are dry as well. Yeah, Burke County. Coincidentally, just those are probably the only counties that didn't have coronavirus <laughs> either. So, <laughs> at, at the beginning of the interview, you talked about your you know getting the licenses and 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 that kind of stuff. Can you talk about the process of that? Did, it took three years to get your licenses. Is that right? So, um, to fill out the application of getting a license for the federal government, if we didn't have help, which we did outsource some help um, filling that out, um, we w- it would have taken us probably a year and a half just because there's so many questions. And honestly, it's like reading something that doesn't, and then you read it and one more time and it doesn't make any sense from what you just read before. So it was really a bit confusing. Mm-hmm. And then once you get approved from the federal government, you have to get the state's approval too, which, so it took us about eight, nine months for the federal government um, to get approved. And luckily we had ran into some of the PTB officers at an event and we talked to them about our application. And I honestly think that that helped push it through the process of getting approved because um, it, we hadn't heard back from anybody, and about two weeks after we talked to them, we got an approval. So that was a positive. Um, wow. But then we um, we did, worked on our building, so that pro- that prolonged our process for the North Carolina um, application because they're not going to approve it until the county approves, like our building being ready. So I have to get a lot longer. Um, so it did take a well, while. But we learned to do tile. In the process of that, we learned how to cut tile yeah. and lay tile and grab a sky jack and paint steam. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did a lot of work ourselves. Which you know, it it might be it, you can look at it in a negative way or a positive way. Um, I think it helped. I mean, clearly, it helped us save a lot of money. Um, but sure, yeah, we could have done it faster and spent a lot more money too. So and had a lot less clothes ruined by paint. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd say if you need me, if ladies, if you need me to organize a protest in the next 
couple of weeks. I have no problem doing that. We can come protest at your distillery. Um, <laughs> you're shaking your head, Biggin. Maybe Why are we protesting? Like, we want people yeah. to show up. Publicity. <laughs> Well, I, I'm just saying, if we can, sh- if, if we can show up with credit cards and protest your distillery, and you know, help you guys out, let us know. Because evidently, you can protest in North Carolina under Roy Cooper. Oh, you just can't, I like, see what open you're up. saying. Like the only way we could go and do the tour is if we protest. Well, no, so distilleries yeah, can be okay. open. Yeah, and so we can. Two. We just well now we're open. Now we're good. Yeah, we just decided to stay closed. You can't have more than like two and a half people. Though, no, our, like well, that. we have an almost ten thousand square foot building, so our occupancy is a lot larger than some of the. So we can have four, four and a half people. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> right, dog, you're out. <laughs> Voted off the island. Um, no. Will we'll hand, we'll, we'll, we'll hand sanitizer samples be available? <laughs> My friend just texted me asking me if. Uh, I think your friend might have a problem. These will be available. <laughs> I think your friend's got a problem. Bruce Bryant, you had a question about the cocktails, is that right? Yeah, so you mentioned you were going to have a cocktail bar, and I'm I'm looking on your uh, website right now, and something kind of got my attention here I wanted to ask you about. Okay. It's called an apple butter old-fashioned. Yeah. Oh, dang. And I love me some apple butter. So, I mean, me I'm, too. I, grew up in I eat apple butter on my toast every um, morning. Uh, that sounds like... I never would have thought of that. Where did that come from? I've never even heard of that before, but that um, sounds like something I need to have in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> it, it's very good. Um, I used to manage bars in Charleston and um, before okay. I moved back home. So I had a lot of experience with different kinds of cocktails, and I was very lucky to have worked with some of the best bartenders in Charleston, and I learned a lot from them about combining unus- not necessarily unusual ingredients, but ingredients you wouldn't necessarily think to use in a cocktail. Um, and so, an apple, apple butter old fashioned. We had uh, made a cocktail back at the bar I worked at called Eighty Two Queen in Charleston, and um, that had some uh, raspberry uh, jam puree in it um, that the chef made for us. And so it just kind of made sense to try another kind of jam, I guess, or spread in a cocktail. Mm-hmm. So thus was born the apple butter old fashioned. <laughs> Where in the world do you see this on the website, by the way? It's under Booze Day Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, Booze Day Tuesday. Oh, then there there's a go. couple of cocktails. That one, I don't. I saw, I saw it. There's more on the website, but that one, I, can't, I didn't see anything else because <laughs> I saw Apple yeah. Butter and I clicked on it. Uh, How many pumps of hand sanitizer is in that drink? Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. I might need to call somebody for help for you. Sorry. His intervention is tomorrow. That's not the first, that's not the first time my friend has... Said he needed that. So you're so you're putting that in a ginger beer for that old fashioned. Yes, just a little popper of ginger. How about beer. It? it? The ginger okay. complements the apples. Um, we've actually used apple cider and ginger beer in uh, some meals before that have been really popular at festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, and also with our mother. And <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so we. I mean, any kind of. Like anything that ginger spice would go well with, lemon juice or lemonade can kind of, everybody likes a mule. You can kind of throw ginger beer on top of just about any cocktail to give it some nice carbonation as well as a little hint of spice. When I was a teenager, I was hoping ginger spice would go well with me. That did not work out well. <clears throat> They're too young to get that big in. Come on, man. They don't get that. <laughs> what, what's, the, what's, the, what's your go-to ginger beer? I personally really like Q, but it's definitely on the spicy side. You can get it on Amazon. Um, but one of my favorites that's kind of like right down the min- middle is like Fentimins or Fever Tree, which you can usually get in Walmart or um, Bilo. Yeah. Uh, uh, Andy, I know that you have, have got to go, and we appreciate your time. Uh, before you leave, though, we have uh, one question. If you have to identify a spirit food, uh, you know, everybody has a spirit animal. If everybody has a spirit food, what would yours be? This determines the whole interview right <laughs> here. So there's no pressure. Oh, no, don't put that on me. Something sweet and Andy. something spicy all at the same time. Or I would say like I'm a Sour Patch Kid. I'm like sour, That's but then true. I'm sweet. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Sour Patch Kid. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with that all one. All right. Well. 
enjoy uh, wedding planning tonight. We'll go ahead and let you go again. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Nice meeting you. I want to. Bye. I want to go ahead and offer my sympathies to the fiance. <laughs> um, if you take two pumps of hand sanitizer, all the worries go away. I'm gonna need you to stop. I'm, I'm gonna need you to stop. <laughs> It's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have a good evening. He, he drinks enough bourbon. We're good. There yeah. we go. Perfect. Bailey, what is um what what's your mash bill? Uh, since you're the chemist, what's <laughs> what's your mash bill generally consist of? Um, well, we're a little different on our bourbon and than our, from our rye. Um, our bourbon mash mm-hmm. is corn, rye, and barley. Um, okay. We're we're about sixty four percent corn. Um, so we're pretty high on our corn, wow. and then we have a little bit more barley for some sweetness because we use unmalted barley, mm-hmm. and then our rye to add a little bit of complexity. Um, it's sure. just right under that. And then our rye whiskey, we use um, 66% rye. Actually, we put our mash bill on our rye whiskey on the label right under the word rye whiskey. Um, so it's 66% rye, and then an even split between wheat and barley. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what's next for you guys? So you have the bourbon, the rye and the maple and, and then gin anything else you're trying to play with with the bourbons um yeah no um dad and i actually have talked about playing around with a couple of different bourbon mashes as well as possibly um trying to find a place for rye in the whiskey world we feel like it's a really undervalued whiskey because when it's made right it's just so darn good um mm. And it's so, it's so good in a cocktail because the original whiskey and cocktails, right. you know, pre-prohibition was rye whiskey. It wasn't bourbon. The reason bourbon became such a big <laughs> thing is because after prohibition, corn was cheap. <laughs> and yeah. and after the Great Depression, people were broke, you know. Um, so that was the best way for them to make whiskey, which is kind of really where bourbon found its footing. It was always around, but it didn't find its footing in, in the popular market until probably a little after prohibition. So you didn't see it much in where it's popular in Manhattans and things like that now. Um, But rye Mm -hmm. is kind of the, it's kind of bourbon big brother in my opinion. It's just nice. I like it because rye's got more of a punch to it, right? It's not going to be nearly as sweet. Yeah. So rye is actually in the grass family. It's actually not in the grain family, which is kind of an interesting that it has so many fermentable sugars in the grass family. Um, and so it's got some kind of spice to it that I don't think anybody really knows the origins of the spice in a rye grass, hmm. but it works. All right. So I have, um, gentlemen, I think we can go ahead and start our tastings. Uh, I have supplied everyone with the bourbon, the maple, and the rye. Bailey, you tell us which one. Where do we need to go first? Where should we so, start? Um, so hold on, I got, I, think, I got a pot. I got, I got to grab mine out of the truck. But hold on, <laughs> all right. Not the hand sanitizer. I started by tasting an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> I started mine last week. Oh lord! And and here's the thing. Let me let me give you some side note, uh, Bailey. I gave these gave them to him like a week ago. I was like, don't try these until we can do it on the show. They definitely, and try then. Them. The next that. day, Brian, producer Brian, is like, "Oh, I'm going to taste the bourbon." I'm like, "No, don't do it now." You couldn't. And then I was drinking it on the show. And you drank it on the show last <laughs> well, week. Was, so yeah, these the, aren't the really post show. <laughs> Everyone missed the post show last night where Rye Dog was a little. Uh... Yeah. Oh my <laughs> was gosh! In rare yeah. form. He was in rare form. Yeah. While Get Mojo's going to. to... <laughs> <You're> absolutely right. <laughs> While Mojo's going to get his uh, bourbons. And his, his drinks. Where can people find you if they want to do a tour? Um, so you can book a tour right now. They're free. Um, we are we are suspended on our tours for a little while while we're under construction because you can't quite get into the building. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we hope to be open back in the next month or so. Um, but no promises. You know how construction goes. <laughs> and, sure. Um, but you can book a tour on our website. Or if you have a group tour, you can call us or message us on social media. Send us an email. Um, we try to be as accommodating as possible to people with their schedules. If they want to do it after our regular hours, we usually make sure somebody's there. Um, it's pretty easy to play nose goes for that. <laughs> and yeah, sure. And you can, in the meantime, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're under Warehouse Distillery on everything, and our Twitter handle is WH Distillery. 
Um, okay. Yeah, and follow us on social media to keep up with our updates about the loading dock as well as when we reopen for tours. Okay, very cool. We'll have all of that information on our show notes, so uh, <laughs> scroll down to your show notes, and then you can find that information there. Yeah. All right, uh, so Mojo is back. You just started another Miller, what is that, Miller Lite? No, I'm on the I'm on the uh, Keto Beer Mick Ultra. Oh, Mick Ultra. Is it the organic which, one? Which one of these is hand sanitizer? That explains so much. <laughs> all right, so wh- which one are we starting with, <laughs> Bailey? Um, Are you guys usually bourbon drinkers? We are pretty avid bourbon drinkers at this point. Okay. So we're going to start you off with the rye whiskey. Okay. Um, so our rye whiskey is 11 months old. It's 90 proof. Um, again, we use rye, wheat, and barley. Um, we do use unmalted barley in that as well. Um, it is, it's probably one of my personal favorites. But here recently, I've been drinking bourbon a lot. <laughs> which is unusual for me because usually my boyfriend drinks the bourbon and I drink the rye, but we switch. Um, mm. It is spicy, but you should taste a little bit of butterscotch. You might get that on the nose as well. Um, okay. But again, whiskey is a lot yeah. like wine, and so are other spirits. Everybody kind of tastes something a little bit different. Yeah. Producer Brian, I see your wheels turning as he's, he's playing with his Glen Karen. <laughs> That's the best way to drink whiskey. Like a, I see, like it tastes like a dark, like a really not burnt, but almost really dark caramel. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You got good taste buds. Yeah, a caramel was on mine. There's like a, there's an apple note in there for me. Um, mm-hmm. At least in the nose, um, I definitely get the spice. Is it citrus? Well, also, like that first that first cut, like a spring with that fresh grass cut. Yeah. <laughs> that real kind of sweet, you know, that sweet note. It's, it's definitely not like the hand sanitizer at the Mexican no. store, So, Has anybody ever told you guys how to smell whiskey? So yes. if I'm understanding it correctly, you put the the glass right on your nose, but you have to keep your mouth open. Yeah, so it doesn't breathe in. your nose hairs. Right. <laughs> yep. You also got to do the Kentucky Chew. The Kentucky Chew. Explain oh, the Kentucky don't Chew. don't chew on your whiskey. Don't chew on your whiskey. You don't chew on it? Don't chew on it. Just let we, were it... Told, we were told oh, to no. in Kentucky. Well, it's Kentucky. <laughs> Life is short. You got to have fun. No, but I, I would say rather let it rest over your palate and kind of slowly fall back through your throat. That way your whole tongue, all of your, all of your taste buds, get the full effect of the whiskey whereas if you chew on it you actually lose some of the alcohol in it um so you let it you let it decant a little in your mouth does that make sense yeah and i've i've had these all of the samples i've had them airing out for a while because that changes things too the the longer that you have them out and letting them breathe and it, it some, some whiskeys whiskey. open up better with water and they might open up better with more water on your palate than they do on someone else's so it's really subjective. Right. Isn't that weird how, it, you know, we've got five guys on this thing and we all t- taste something different and mm-hmm. our experiences will be different. It just, it blows my mind. Yeah. It's the, it's kind of what makes, I think, what makes craft especially like really cool is that everybody has something different that they appreciate about a certain spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get sweetness out of the rye, which normally a rye, I kind of get a punch that I don't like. But, yeah, that's because you've had But this one, I think, is, is smooth enough, yeah. but yet it's sweet enough. But there is a spice to it. There's yeah. a kick. What's the proof yeah, on the rye? Cause I don't remember. The rye's 90 proof. 90? Okay. Yeah. All right, where are we going next, Bailey? We're headed to the bourbon next. Here we go. And, and these are about, if I'm looking at them, uh, they're about the same... Same color. Uh huh. Um, your color is about the same, by the way. These are Watchman cigar glasses. So shout oh. out to uh, Leon. Shout out to Leon. Yeah. Um, Great guy. <laughs> to Uncle Leon. So I still need to get with him and get some stogies. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell us about the bourbon. Okay. So our bourbon is two years old. It's eighty proof. Um, as a refresh, we use corn, rye, and barley in our bourbon mash. Um, it is. 
definitely what I find myself going to most days. I prefer it on the rock, um, on a big rock, not okay. not a bunch of baby ice cubes. <laughs> that way it melts a little bit slower. Um, that's my personal favorite way to drink it. But my boyfriend would tell you he just likes it in a Glen Karen glass. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm drinking my neat. Are, are you guys putting uh, Mojo? You're just drinking it straight out of the bottle, a little sample bottle. Damn. Well, I mean, I am, I am trailer park high class. No, it's Expensive. your upper middle okay, class that's just how white. Mojo at the party. What's that? My dad used to joke with us that you got to say your upper middle class white trash. <laughs> I can't even joke that I'm that high class. So. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking free shots of the hand sanitizer pump. So I feel like we should call I mean, you my a friend doctor. is. We 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 will as soon as this show's over. Um, my, unfortunately, my doctor may be listening right now. <laughs> he's, he's dialing nine one one as we speak. <laughs> he's doing it for you. So this bourbon, guys, I it's it's not nearly. I mean, you it's so much sweeter. You let it sit out and <laughs> let it air out. To me, this is. You know, some bourbons have a kick to it as well, but at what, 80, you said 80, 80 proof? Yes. And two years it's, old. So in it, Kentucky, it's considered a baby whiskey. Yeah. But we're very proud of it at two years old. What is, what's the oldest barrel that you've got? Um, we have one of our very first batches of bourbon still in barrels. Um, so it is a little bit over five years old okay um we're not really sure getting... what we're gonna do with it we actually have two barrels of our first batch. um are you are you tasting a little bit of it as you go along no no yeah we're, no? Def- okay. we're definitely drinking <laughs> um we just okay. we're, kind of, <laughs> we're, we're not sure if we want to use it as you know to do a single barrel at least to get people excited about when we can age our whiskeys longer and can afford to keep them in barrels longer um, or if we yeah. want to, if we just want to release it, both barrels, um, we haven't really decided. I personally would like to keep a barrel back for gauging just because as sure. a distiller, I don't know. Have you guys ever seen the documentary Neat on Hulu? Yes. yes. I love it. I, I tried to get him yeah. on the show. He, he was all about it and then decided he's going to bail. So, yeah. Boo. Um, well, so I actually, Andy and I actually had lunch with um, Mary Ann East. Um, oh, nice. A, a few months ago, um, and spoke to her in Asheville, and she was saying, like, the one thing that really is crazy about being in the whiskey world is that most distillers don't have the opportunity to ever taste their third batch. Once you let it age mm. to maturity, you know, a lot of people let them age 18, 20 years. Well, then once you taste that 18 to 20 year old whiskey and you want to tweak it, then you have another 18 to 20 years to taste it again. Well, that's, you know, yeah. 54 to 60 years of aging whiskey. Most people don't live that long. <laughs> sure. Wow. Yeah. This is got thoughts, producer Brian. Um. Yeah. So I actually took notes because I drank this earlier. I, when I first tasted it, I actually wrote down my thoughts. Look at <laughs> on you. This one. Uh. I got. I was getting a, when I, on the nose. I was really getting a raisin kind of note mm-hmm. myself. I could see like, that. Kind of sweet spice and my. When I tasted it, I could tell, I mean, you know, I've had, I've had a few pretty good bourbons and it tasted young to me. I could tell it was young, but it was not bad for what it is uh, for being two years. Um, I was getting like a, like a, uns- like a sweet tea, like a tea note in there. Oh, okay. There's an earthiness to that bourbon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that you find you know, that can from, definitely get the, from oak. the combination of the rye and the barley that kind of gives yeah. you that balance of earthy flavors. Um, the barley yeah. gives you that weediness and the earthiness, whereas the rye kind of gives you that, like the the spiciness of earth, as well as that kind of raisiny aspect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm 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 tasting the raisin now, so appreciate that. Yep. You tell me. <laughs> okay, so you're ready for the All crowd right. loser. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, hold oh. on. I, I think the uh, <laughs> the bourbon. I got the raisin, but also have like a little bit of banana, mm. like like banana French toast, like okay. like that pancake batter, that. the vanilla and the pancake. Are you, the, well, the, are you, you drinking know, the maple? 
<laughs> no, I'm drinking the regular bourbon. You'd know if you're drinking. Max is drinking the hand sanitizer. No, I'm going, exactly. going, going back to. See, I can get you on the. I can get the banana now. Yep. Yeah, I can get that too. I mean, but it's, it's not like it's not like a full ripe banana. Mm-hmm. It's like you know the sweet sweet. It's like, like a that. plantain. Oh, well, it's not even that though. But it's like you know, right when you throw the French toast in a pan, you kind of get that kind of sweet banana scent. Yeah, it's from like it. that smell turned to a taste. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I could be totally. The funny just thing off the about like right tasting now. bourbon, if you throw out certain words to people, they immediately go, "Oh yeah, maybe I did taste that." Yeah, like, yeah. But the but the raisin <laughs> there was some, but the raisin was perfect right. because there's something I could not peg. And there, and I'm like, man, there's I, this is familiar, but yeah. I can't. I mean, when's the last time you had a raisin? Uh, eight Yesterday. years old in elementary Isn't school? A cookie. I mean, just, I have a, like, yeah, a, I know raisin cookies are the jam. Mm. Yeah, but when's the last time? I, I I can't remember the last time I had an oatmeal raisin. Oatmeal oh. raisin cream pie. That's not oh. oatmeal Ooh. raisin cream pie. It's just an oatmeal cream pie. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm going to I'm going You're to right I'm that. going to Harris I'm going to Harris teeter for some little Debbie's. Debbie's here in a minute. All right, right dog, what do you what do you got down there? What do you what are you tasting smelling? I'm tasting and smelling let's see, scrambled eggs and cheese. <laughs> he he's he's smoking a spleef over there right now. So look at him. He's just chilling oh. red eyes. Can we and get everything. an oatmeal cream pie old fashioned? That's what I want to know. Can we get Ooh, yeah, okay, I'll work on that. You know what? Yeah. My description is not going to be as eloquent as the rest of you because I'm more of a beer guy. So, like the stuff that you're describing, I can I can sense it, but it was after you said it. Right. Uh, it tastes like, like hand sanitizer before, to him before you said it. The, so the best trick for being able to taste new and smell new flavors is we actually when I worked at a beer bar in college, they did this to us for part of our training. You go to a farmer's market blindfolded and you pick up and smell different things. Obviously, you have to go with someone you can't just walk around blindfolded by yourself. <laughs> well, challenge accepted. I'm going to try it. Whoa, producer Brian, stop that. <laughs> no, but you go and you start, you smell things. Or even when you're at the grocery store, you pick up different fruits and vegetables and ingredients and spices and you smell them and it kind of starts to give you some sensory evaluation skills. So you start to understand huh. what you're smelling and tasting and you can attribute it to certain nostalgic events when you're able to single single out certain ingredients. Well, I'm going to try that. That's yeah. a good idea. I'm going to have to try that too. It's also a really but I, I will beer, tell you, <laughs> I'm sure. Even though I'm a beer drinker, I am enjoying what we've done so far, and and I'm looking forward to this. Uh, the maple, maple. Fire. Yeah, this yes. is our our dark horse. This is kind of our, um, I guess our our flagship that people aren't sure about because they tried crown maple, which is completely different, um, and then they try sure. it and they buy three bottles. Um, <laughs> So the maple is made actually with our bourbon mass and organically sourced maple syrup from an Amish farm in the southwestern part of Virginia. Um, that was as close to home as we could get good maple syrup. And then we rest it over bourbon spirals in a stainless steel tank for a year and a half um, to add some oak character to it as well. We don't use any artificial flavor, no added sugar. It is just straight from the tree, maple syrup, our bourbon mass, and then we bring it down to 60 proof. Um, you know, so grandma can drink it, still get up after dinner. Um, <laughs> and it has definitely been our most popular product at the distillery. Wow. This is some good stuff. <laughs> if you let it air out, cause, cause I've done this with, um, you know, I just poured it and drank it. Mm-hmm. And when you let it air out, it's completely different. Yeah. Wow. Okay. To be honest with you, Bailey, when I first had it, I was not a huge fan, but letting it just sit, holy cow, that's a shocker. Yeah, so we've had these bottles for about two weeks now, and I opened them, the two I got, I guess it was the Saturday, it was almost two two weeks ago, so the bottle's been open for about two weeks. Yeah, anytime a bottle's open, that helps a whiskey decant. Yeah. Because Uncle Leon said... You you have to, you know, taste it, but it is just like maple pancakes. Mm-hmm. And when I first had it, I was like, Leon, you're, you know, you've been hitting the, the devil's lettuce a little bit too much. <laughs> but now, absolutely, I can taste that. Yeah. 
So we wanted to keep wow. enough of a whiskey balance in with our flavored whiskey to make sure that whiskey drinkers could still enjoy it. But then you could also kind mm-hmm. of have that transitional training whiskey for non-whiskey drinkers to acquaint them to the flavor of a good bourbon without overwhelming it's Training them. wheels. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and our Christmas meal is chicken and waffles. So maple just made sense. <laughs> Only thing I can equate to this is when I go to uh, Krispy Kreme on Double Dozen Fridays. That's Andy's favorite. And I get their maple maple glazed donuts. Yeah. With a shot of hand sanitizer on the side. (laughs) So honestly, I think coffee might be better. You, uh, Can we mute him? I think I, I think I embarrass I think I embarrass Big and just like I do my wife. <laughs> it's, but it's, you know it's like I have to I have to have him. I'm but I don't have to have him <laughs> type of thing. So well, don't make here's, it so bad your wife. <laughs> so I feel bad for my wife. <laughs> I do too. Straight up, I do. <laughs> Uh, but when I think of maple syrup in my head, and and this is where I think I I lost it, was I'm thinking like uh, Aunt Jemima, Mrs. Aunt Jemima, yeah, yeah. Maple maple syrup. We don't play around with any of that fake crap. That's not. That's but this is this is Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it's uh, real stuff. Maple syrup. Yeah, yeah. that's have, it. Have you thought about just sourcing it from there and just going like getting a bunch of pancakes because they'll keep bringing those bottles out. It'll be way cheaper <laughs> for you. Well, actually, it's folks. probably actually not super for us because <laughs> the way my family eats at a Cracker Barrel is mildly frightening. Oh, okay. I'm with you. And mildly fair, frightening. Fair point. <laughs> my uncle's wow. like the guy that orders three plates for himself at Cracker Barrel. Oh. The guy that you get you get uncomfortable because he's ask, he's asking you to bring more biscuits. And you're yeah. like, you had six times. Stop. You had stop. six baskets by yourself. Yeah. Right, you need to stop. Yeah, your uncle is my spirit animal. <laughs> yeah, Bailey, uh, we we purchased all these at the ABC uh-huh. store mm-hmm. uh, in North Carolina. Can is it just? Are you guys just in North Carolina? Currently, yes. Um, our goal okay. is to move them to South Carolina next. Um, very hard to find a distributor <laughs> um, that's yeah. not gigantic and expects you to have the marketing budget of Jack Daniels. Or um, a small one that doesn't really quite have the potential for growth that we really would want. Um, so we're really kind of we're kind of trying to weigh our options. And this whole you know six feet of distance makes it pretty difficult to meet with people. <laughs> um, sure. It's just six feet. We totally respect that, but it does. We're we're really just we're kind of feel like we're stuck between you know a rock and a COVID place, I guess. Um, <laughs> We're kind of stuck in this hand sanitizer limbo. Please don't drink it. Disclaimer again. Um, yep. Two pumps. <laughs> no, no pumps. This is not Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but we really, we would like to move into South Carolina and possibly Tennessee next um, okay. and just kind of see where our growth goes. But we really want to make sure that we're covered across North Carolina first. This is our home state. This is where we grew up. This is, you know, this place means so much to us, and it's it's where we decided to build our business, despite the fact that North Carolina is probably the hardest place to put a distillery at this point in time. Absolutely. Um, so we really would like to be throughout at least the majority, about 80 to 90 percent of the ABC boards. Um, um, so if it's not in your ABC store, ask for it. <laughs> but we try to list yep. on our website all of the ABC, at least boards. And stores that the ABC board will tell us that we're in. Can you guys ship? No. North Carolina State does not you allow can't. any liquor to be shipped from a distillery yeah. or to an individual. Now we're doing the protest. So basically what we're saying is, I'll say this, this is not coming out of nope. the warehouse distillery's mouth. <laughs> um, North Carolina has a, a very antiquated liquor law situation i think and our buddy john trump who has been on the yeah. show bourbon and still great uh book yeah absolutely man i, I love i love john yeah. trump I, st- I still follow him 
Yeah. Actually, if you go fan. on Facebook and look at him, John Francis. Yeah, John Francis. He doesn't even allow the name Trump to <laughs> bog him down. Um, but we, North Carolina, we have a we, – we are stuck in the 1920s as far as liquor yeah. laws right now. And we are we are trying to, uh, you know, move forward to at least 1980 well, liquor laws here. We really just want parity with beer and wine. For as distillers in the state, we just pa- want to be par- able to parity with beer and wine. Yeah, parity yeah. is yeah, parity is a great word that um, I think uh, people, some people may not understand, but uh, equality with beer and wine. We just want the yeah, same, equality, the same equality, taxes, absolutely. the same restrictions, the same ability to get our product into consumers' hands without all of the the red right. tape and the complications and the difficulties that sometimes are found in our antiquated system of law. Um, for instance, it would be easier. It would be easier to open a brothel in North Carolina than a distillery. Well, that I don't know, but it's definitely easier. Not that it's easy for them at all. It is easier to be a brewer or a vintner in North Carolina. Um, for instance, on a, on a totally estimated number, if we sold, let's say, 20 cases of our spirit, um, the revenue that that would make for the state, a brewery would have to sell probably 3,000 cases of beer to meet the same revenue for the state that our 20 cases make. That's how What's the tax is. on one bottle? So when you shop in the ABC store or at a distillery, because we have to make the same pricing as the ABC system, the ABC system makes Forty nine and a half percent of that retail sale. And that is before oh, be. state taxes, before federal taxes, before cost of goods comes out of it, before marketing budget. Yeah. Forty nine and a half percent. Forty nine and a half percent. Which is why it's tough when so, people say, Well, why is your booth so expensive? And it's kind of like, Well Yeah, it's it's a thirty five dollar bottle, I think if I remember correctly. Yes. Our bourbon and our rye are thirty four ninety five, and the maple is thirty two ninety five, which is still ridiculously cheap. With when you're thinking about adding those taxes to it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We tried to price it as low as possible to make sure that we could keep yeah. the lights on, and also that mine and Andy's friends in our tw- in their twenties could still afford it. You know, if your yeah. friends are going to buy it, who is? <laughs> right. Name name one other industry in North Carolina that has a forty nine and a half percent tax. Honestly, I, I don't think that I'm educated enough to know if there is one, but I'm there. I there there's it's, not it's, one. Yeah, there's not one. It definitely makes it hard for our, for our industry in the state. I think us as distillers, we really try to band together to really find new innovative ways to ensure that our that consumers know who we are. I think that's why we're such a tight community yeah. because we all want to succeed. Yeah, I, and I think our our friend uh, Leanne Powell uh, did so much for this state. She did uh, with the liquors, um, and we we love and miss her tremendously. Yeah. Andy and I unfortunately only got to meet her one time, and she was so welcoming and so warm that when we heard the news, we were just. Mm. We were really kind of at a loss because we we were like, wow, somebody who literally welcomed us in just completely no holds barred and has done so much for our industry. And we ha- didn't even get the opportunity to thank her. Yeah. And um, her her smile, I don't think I'll ever forget it. Sweet smile. Well, the, the, only, the only way to thank her is to continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, and we're very lucky. There's the, the guys at Old Nick Williams. They're super good at, yeah. you know, including everybody and trying to make sure that everything's going well. And then you've got Statesful, you've got Southern Distilling there that's trying to do everything. And then just really every 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 distiller that I've met in the Distillers Association of North Carolina has amazed me with how warm and welcoming and and incredibly including they are to Andy and I, being as young as we are. You know, it, it's easy for us to walk into a room and people to assume that we're just salespeople. And we've never felt that way mm-hmm. with the distillers in North Carolina. Wow. Well, that's just because you don't have a straw hat and overalls. <laughs> yeah, and a beard. But maybe yeah. if you change that up. <laughs> and, and yeah, maybe beard. if you change that up, you, you'll be you'll you'll 
bill to fit in. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we are obligated by uh, Uncle Leon to ask you a question. Uh, okay. and this is the Watchman Cigars uh, question uh, to our guests. Are you? Do you cook at all, Bailey? Every, almost every night. <laughs> okay, so you're going to be a good good one for this. Can you give me your meatloaf recipe? I don't like meatloaf. Oh, snap. If you were to make meatloaf. Can I give you my pork marinade recipe? Your pork marinade recipe. You can, but we're still going to come back to this meatloaf question. Okay, well, if I had to make meatloaf, I'd probably use a chopped white onion, very finely okay. diced, maybe a green pepper, um, okay. lean ground beef. Probably a yeah. little bit of ground mustard, um, a hint of ketchup, okay. some Worcestershire, salt, pepper, garlic powder. Wow. Okay. I think we know why you so, don't like meatloaf. That's, <laughs> Producer Brian says it's probably why you don't like meatloaf. Would you add an egg and or crackers or some type of binder? Well, I don't. So I'm really impartial to adding a lot of like breadcrumbs to anything because I lived in Charleston for three years and I used to be very critical of crab cakes that were mostly bread. <laughs> okay. So I'm pretty, okay. I would, if I added breadcrumbs and an egg, they would, it would be like one egg and maybe a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. Okay. All right. That's fair. I think that's fair. Um, Leon does not add any of that to his meatloaf and we just make fun of him. So he made a segment called <laughs> meatloaf, um, by Watchman Cigars. So basically it's just meatloaf. a hamburger. My mother, my mother has a wonderful meatloaf recipe it is the only meatloaf I will eat. I don't Okay. Well, maybe we need to, we need to have mom on the show next you time get mama just Steph to give us a yeah, yeah, yeah. for meatloaf recipe. There we go. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Bailey, thank you so much for coming on the show. We've loved having you. Um, We're gonna, oh, hey, we have to have our pork oh, marinade. Pork marinade. Oh, bring pork the, marinade. Bring the, okay. yeah. So it's a cup of maple whiskey, oh. um, about like a quarter it. cup mm-hmm. of Dijon mustard, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Hmm. Okay. It's fantastic. I like it. And you got, you got to let it sit for at least a day. At least a day. Mm, okay. Like every six hours, so it gets on all the sides. That's the best way to do it. Do we bake or grill it? Oh, you got to grill it. You cannot bake it. Mm, all okay. right. Okay. Making sure that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's on a pork chop, pork tenderloin? Pork what are we or putting pork it on? Tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. Whichever. Okay. It's, it is any marinade going to be better on a tenderloin just because of how juicy it is. Unless it's a bone in pork chop. Hey, Bacon, when are we doing this? Uh, the uh, warehouse distillery tour. Well, they're not open. If you were, when you were going to your truck. Oh no, no, we we got no, the insider the tour. Oh, right. the public. Yeah, wink, we got wink. insider tour. Wink, wink, nod, nod. We'll we'll have to make <laughs> it up a weekend. We're not public. <laughs> we're insiders. You'll be dead by the time we go because you're drinking the hand sanitizer. <laughs> well, he might, no, he no, might not I, be I, I just. <laughs> but we'll so we get there. rid of the hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one for the rest. of that was my friend, by the way. That was not lies, me. Lies, all lies, all lies. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I sense judgment. I here can't already. even see your face, and I can just hear it in your voice. Oh snap! Oh, <laughs> she ain't playing, man. I like her. A you know lot. what? You know what? I don't. I don't. I don't think we're married. So I. Uh, yeah. So next week. Uh, next week, Mojo's <laughs> out. Bailey's in. Yeah. Do you want to be on the podcast? <laughs> yeah. I'm totally down for a You're guest spot host. opening. <laughs> Come on with it. Every every week, I'm trying to be. I'm, y'all try to get rid of me. No, we don't. What's going on? He says as he flares really? his word. Uh huh. That's that's the key right there, Bailey. Well, that's the mate. That's the maple the key. Boundary Street. <laughs> no, that's that hand bourbon. sanitizer problem you got. <laughs> Look, I, I made me a dirty martini <laughs> hand sanitizer God, drink. Don't add a all earlier. <laughs> On that note, we're going to wrap this up. Thank uh, you, Bailey, guys. thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we've we enjoyed our experience. We will be out there sometime soon, and we're looking forward to meeting you guys. Yeah, we can't make, wait to meet you guys in person. Thanks again for having us. Thank you. Have a great night. Good night, y'all.
All right. Well, I, to be honest, uh, my mind has been completely uh, changed uh, with with these things. Just letting them air out a little bit. I think it was just. I think you're right, producer Brian. They tasted a little young, but when you let them air out, it completely changes everything. And I'm I'm grateful that I had them just sitting around here for a little while. I think the uh, I think like she said, the dark horse was the maple. What was let's let's talk about everybody's favorite real quick. Producer Brian, what was your favorite? Uh the rye was definitely my favorite. Um it just it was the be- it was the most complete product to me. Mm, okay. It, it, it did I don't know. It was well done. <clears throat> I'm not into flavored whiskeys terribly. Okay. The maple really reminded me of screwball a whole lot. But in, I a, see in that. a good way, you know. Yeah. Um that that wasn't bad. I would like I said I put it in my coffee earlier tonight, so uh, yeah, I can see myself having that around for a cocktail or something, okay, or for pancakes. Yeah, are you going to make the uh, apple butter old fashioned? It, when I get all the ingredients, uh, yeah, that's a very we got, we got real it. possibility. Yeah, okay, that'd be awesome. Uh, Rye Dog, what do we got? Well, because I am a beer drinker and mm-hmm. not not uh, the bourbon aficionado that the rest of you are, I would have to say the maple is my favorite. Okay. And then second would be the bourbon, and then the third would be the rye. The rye's got too much spice for you? Um, A little bit, but, I mean, they were all good. Higher proof, too. I feel like yeah. the rye, the grass in the rye has made your allergies explode. <laughs> <laughs> this just started happening, too. It's weird. <laughs> all right. Most importantly, Mojo, which one's your favorite? I wouldn't go most important. Besides hand sanitizer. Uh, yeah. I, I had that coming. <laughs> Um, pardon me, ma'am. I, I actually, uh, I'm not, I'm not a flavored, I'm not a flavored whiskey kind of guy, but the maple was surprisingly very delicious. Yeah. It was something that, I mean, I had a room t- temperature. I, I broke the tab off the bottle mm-hmm. and had it and it was delicious. Okay. So I, I would, I would give them the maple. You could do so many things with that. Yeah. You know, imagine a maple mart, you know, maple. Martini, maple bacon, Manhattan, old fashioned, maple bacon, cosmopolitan. Yeah, I ma- maple cosmo. I mean, so you have you have so many drinks with that. Just that maple, um, maple straight up. I bet you know, Long Island Ice Tree would be good too. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many things. But I, at the other two, the bourbon versus rye, I do like the rye better than the mm. bourbon. Uh, the rye, I think the rye with the grassy notes, that sweet kind of mm-hmm. grassy notes, I think is kind of is interesting. It's different. I'm not. I hate. I hate bourbon rye. I I loathe yeah. it. I don't. I don't know why, but it was, it was good. Yeah, you like the rye? Uh, yeah. I'm not. Here's the thing. Out of out of these three, I would go rye, uh, maple, and then the bourbon. And but with with the disclaimer of, I think that if you age that bourbon for four years, yep. you've got something completely yep. different, um, and it's going to be coming out of the gate hot. Uh, and I think you're going to have some really good stuff. I'd be interested to see their rick houses when we go visit. I want to see how yeah. the temperature differ- differentiation works for them. But um, I think if you if you let that sit for four six years, you've got a legit contender there. Yeah, if they did like a bottled and bond. Somehow mm-hmm. on that, I think that'd be amazing. Absolutely. Maybe Absolutely. Get the proof up and uh, age it a little longer. Yep. Absolutely. Now, I think they have some good stuff coming. Yeah. And um, obviously, for the for them to put out a a product to the average consumer like maple is it I, I, you know not to equate it to music you know where you have you know let's just Let's think of the '90s, where most of us grew up in on this show, and you have like, oh, what was a uh, there's a band, hair band called Extreme that came out with a song called "More Than Words," <laughs> and they, and they were pigeonholed to that one damn song. <laughs> they could not come out with a song other than that. I never thought when we started this show we would get "More Than Words" by Extreme. Well, but we never uh, saw what that I'm saying is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm full of surprises, <laughs> but, um, and sanitizer, but, um, show title. Yeah. 
But what I'm saying is that I hope they don't pigeonhole themselves into just maple bourbon. Like screwball yeah. will always be known as peanut butter bourbon, mm-hmm. peanut butter whiskey. Yeah. Right? Um, there's another company, PB PB and J. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we're not talking about your beer drinking, Ryan. But yeah. um I see what you're saying. You know you know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't want them to be pigeonholed just that because they're they probably will. so much, they are so much more. I think their rise legit. I think it's got a good run to it. I, you know what? On on a political note, I wish we people would judge people on their like we judge bourbon. We judge bourbon on the content of the bourbon, not the person making it. You know what I'm saying? That would be so nice in a society. We just I mean, that's what Dr. King said, judge right? People on the, Judge it by yeah, the content co- of the bourbon and not the color. Content of the barrel. Content, <laughs> content of, the of the barrel, barrel. versus yeah. and not the color. I feel like that could be a, sh- a shirt, but I'm a little nervous, to be honest with you. Um, Isn't that sad? You're nervous about everything, so that's okay. <laughs> I am nervous yeah. about everything. Um, cool. Well, guys, I've I've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a great episode. I've, I, I'm going to be going back and hitting some of that maple uh, in the morning. Do you have the skills to take us out? I don't know. I've drank too much maple and hand sanitizer, so maybe a, maybe a without. Anyway, guys, appreciate you guys turning tuning in to this show. Uh, Facebook Live, appreciate you guys tuning in. The ones that have stuck it out, the ones that have kind of tuned in, tuned out, and tuned back in. Uh, I apologize for myself. <laughs> no, actually, I don't. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Go to our Facebook page. It's on the FridayPhilosophy.com. You can also check us out on the Instagram and Twitter, Twitters, Twitters at, at SFP Radio. You can also wherever you download your We've podcast. Also got a Twitter again. We're okay. also on Twitter if yeah. we're not, uh, and Twitter. So, <laughs> man, we may have we have more. We may have to social, to sign up for all the social medias there. But um, wherever you download your podcast, just please go there. Look up Southern Fry Philosophy. Hit uh, subscribe, like, review, rate. How, what are you doing? You can give us a negative rating. Just put, you know, uh, just just put a one star and put hand sanitizer. <laughs> we'll we will know what it means and we'll laugh about it. Big and we'll be like, what the? What have you done? Yeah, and you know, we'll yeah, we'll we'll go from there. Um, Patreon, Patreon dot com forward slash SFP Radio. You can also find us on YouTube. We're still trying to get our uh, subscriptions up on YouTube. Kind of late to the game with that. We're uh, since Joe Rogan's leaving you got YouTube, to we're trying to we're trying to fill the gap on that. So you know, uh, SFP four slash SFP radio YouTube, um, that'd be great. YouTube or Joe Rogan, eat your heart out. I guess you're not big game like us. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> we're begging also, for a hundred uh, YouTube video uh, subscribers. I think he's yeah. got that covered. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, he's he's gonna lose it all. You know, we gotta we gotta capture the game a little bit. Um, also, most importantly, um, we're we're here in North Carolina, so if you're here in the Charlotte metro area, um, you can check out uh, Live Share Carolinas. Um, for, I, I'm a heart recipient, so uh, you can sign up to be a heart donor or organ donor. Most importantly, um, but you can go to check out Live Share Carolinas. So you can sign up to register to be an organ donor. It's important to me. Yeah, if uh, you guys like what I say or don't like what I say or whatever, that's that's perfectly fine. But just check that out. You know, we we appreciate that. We're just trying to, you know, if one person hears that and sign up signs up to be an organ donor, that's awesome. We appreciate you guys. Absolutely. If uh, on a lighter note, if you need a website, I want you to check out our friends at webmarize dot com. If you listen to this episode this this week only, uh, if you need a website. It's two hundred dollars off. Use promo code Biggin, wow. and that's actually coming out of my pocket. So how about that? Use promo code Biggin. I'll pay for it. Two hundred dollars off. Robert doesn't even know about it, but how about I'll tell him tomorrow. Uh, but hey, check it out if you need a website. Webmarize dot com. I'm thinking about doing a topless mojo dot com now and just do. Yeah, you don't want to see that. My pay. wife doesn't even want to see that. Yeah. So there's that, guys. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in, and as always. Keep looking up.